<laughs> Welcome to Create Today Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Stanley, and this show is all about stories and strategies to help you create the life that you want, no matter what kind of shit you've been through. And here's my dear friend, Angela Bradford, who has been through a lot of shit, continues <laughs> to go through a lot of shit. And I'm so excited to share her story and get her on here so that we can help others that are going through some of the same things that you've been through, some of the same things that you're going now, that have allowed how, you know, to help us figure out how to move through the hardest things and one of the biggest things we're going to be talking about is discipline because she's one of the most disciplined people I know. She just doesn't negotiate with herself. She just makes the calls, does what she needs to do day in, day out, day and consistency. So it's discipline with consistency. I think a lot of us can be super disciplined for like a week and I'm like, ah, <laughs> I need a vacation, you know, and, and it's so hard to keep up that consistency. So mm. Welcome, Angela. I'm so oh, happy. Man. I'm so glad to be here. It's been awesome. I mean, Stanleys are amazing. As you guys know, they're listening. So I'm so excited for today's podcast. And Thank where you. It goes. We, uh, she's actually staying with us. She lives in Canada. Well, she lives in Arizona right now. It's a good place to Stanley's, be in January. Yes. So good. It is, right? So good. Um, <laughs> I want to start just a little bit with your childhood because you do sure. have a unique childhood. I do. And um, tell people about it. What sure. was it like growing up? So I was homeschooled. Um, so me and my brother were homeschooled. There's just the two of us. So when he graduated, he's older than me by four years. So when he graduated, I was like the valedictorian. I was everything. I was the worst person and the best in the whole school. Number one. Was fantastic. <laughs> Number one. Um, homeschooled my whole life, except for three months. We went to a, a Christian school in grade two. And otherwise, I was homeschooled. So I graduated a year early and never I technically got my diploma. But I mean, it definitely hasn't stopped me from anything. And, right. um, you know, I'm, I'm glad I was homeschooled because I, you know, later in life, we figured out I'm probably slightly dis- dyslexic. And so I did a lot of phonics and a lot of reading and stuff like that, that probably in the normal school system, I would have got left behind and I probably yeah. wouldn't be able to read. And I mean, I just can't imagine my life without that. So I'm so grateful for all the time my mom put into like A is A and A and B is B and however, all that stuff, man, we did so much of that. It's God crazy. bless her. <laughs> yes. That takes a lot of patience. Oh, she's amazing. <laughs> so yeah. in your high school years, um, tell them what your normal home, home school day was like. Yeah. So about 15, 14, 15, I started, the neighbor let me start to ride their horses. I was horse obsessed. And so my neighbor let me start to ride her horses. And so I was like, okay, perfect. So I would get up at like four or five in the morning, five, something like that. I would get all my homework done. Cause I had, you know, I had the cheat sheets. I had everything so I could answer my own quizzes like, <laughs> and everything. And so I get up at five, I'd get all my homework done and uh, schoolwork done by like eight. And then I go ride horses from eight o'clock till, you know, supper time. And like I just 10 hours a day. You yeah. I'd get back at like six o'clock at night. Um, I'd do whatever I'd be hanging with the horses all day. And then, yeah, I went, I did a 50 mile ride. I rode to rim. Like I just did all kinds of stuff. Um, anything horse related, I was like all in. So I just get my homework done and, and then, yeah, just got obsessed with horses and at 19 went down and trained horses in the States and it took me a lot of places. <laughs> wow. So, so yeah. that's how you first came down to the States was a horse. What was that horse job like? Um, so I was training horses up in Canada right away, obviously. And then, um, there was, I don't know, something popped up online or something about training horses at this camp in Minnesota. And I applied and I was like, and they called me and they said, yeah, we got like three or 400 horses and we need them started. And I was like, okay, that sounds great. So I said, I can come down. And, and it was kind of crazy when I think about it, because they had no idea who I was. And they just hired me like a little 19 year old Alberta girl coming down. And um, so I drove down in my little 85 S10 and with my dog and we went down to, to Minnesota. I didn't know anybody there. We just moved to, you know, this, this camp and it was quite the experience. It's about three or 400 acres. Um, this camp is massive camp and they'd have like for families or for kids. Yeah. Kids. So they'd bring in like probably, I don't know, we would over be, we overrun every week. We probably had three to 400 kids a week run through this camp. And, um, it was funny because I was there to just start Colts. I really wasn't anything to do with the kids. But what would happen is they'd be short staffed on like all the riding stuff. So I re- roped into all of that. And then they'd be short horses. They had, they didn't have enough trained horses. So I started to become the riding director. She would give me a list of all these horses that I had to like wear out by the time the kids got on them in the morning. So I would like go out at like four or five in the morning again, which in Minnesota was great because it's actually like not hot. And so I'd go out and I'd ride horses and just like gallop them 
for like miles and miles. And as they got better, better shape, you'd have to ride them longer and longer. And I just, I was in really good shape too. Cause I was riding like hard all, wow. all morning. And then by the time they got in, the kids would get on these horses would be like, just exhausted. So they, they wouldn't were, buck them off. They would be great for the kids and they just like ride them. And then the next day I do the same thing. And so we had a list of all these horses that were like, it was really fun. They were, they were fun horses. They weren't like bronchi, but they were just like high energy. So They're I just young? like, just like ex barrel horses and barrel racing horses. Anyway, oh. it was fun. I rode and I would just gallop and gallop and gallop and gallop and gallop and next horse and next horse and next horse and next horse in the morning. And then by like you know, I'd ride like 10 horses by like eight in the morning kind of thing, just like wear them out. So it was, it was a fun experience. And then, um, it's like yeah, a blast. my dog got hit is what changed it. Aww. Um, and she, he passed away Rainer and, uh, I had nightmares that night and Aww. I left the next day and I could, couldn't take it. And I drove home and, mm. you know, and then, by a car. Yeah. Yeah. On the sad. ranch. No, someone driving by, we were right on the highway and, you know, life happens and, mm. Um, most of my dogs have got hit by something. It seems like, so it's not like I was first time that's happened, but no. it was my first dog. Aww. So, um, so yeah. So I left the next day and drove back, drove home? back home and said, Hey, I'm out. And it was almost the end of the season anyway. So I was like, I'm out, I'm going back home and went back home and, um, got another puppy and drove down to Texas. <laughs> oh my gosh. What was yeah. in Texas? Um, I just needed to get away. <laughs> but so why Texas? The, I had a friend down there it was, <laughs> okay. and it seemed like a long drive. So me and May asked a Jen, long drive. little 11-week-old puppy or 11, I think 11-week-old puppy who went down to Texas. Um, my poor mom, like I said, I, I really took her through the school of like, because you were talking about that. <laughs> like, I just like threw it all at her. Like, And you're 18? Yeah, I was 19, 19 at this point. Okay. Yeah, 18, 19. What city there. in Texas? Uh, Lubbock, Texas. Lubbock, okay. Yep, yep. yep. Yeah, broke down in Happy Texas oh and had to like go find a mechanic shop and he fixed my little 85 S10 and... <laughs> Um, which is the first car you bought. It was my first car I got. Yeah. And it was like, how much was it? A dollar. <laughs> yeah. And it didn't have a speedometer. So you based your RPMs was your speedometer, your RPMs cause it's a five speed. So you're, it was a little like, like single cab yeah. yellow truck. It was great. Um, awesome. Yeah, it worked. It was, it Price was is right. and then I'm driving into Texas and yeah, way I went. Um, and that's where like, yeah. And then I came back and I was like, okay, I want to be a truck driver. Um, what how the highway what just happens hit. i was hooked i was hooked I you mean, just love just, driving just that much it. yeah it was so much fun oh my gosh <laughs> so you just call truck driving so i was like i want to be truck what? driving and then but like there you can't cross the border until you're 21 oh and so i was like okay well i'll drove, drive school bus because like if you can haul kids you can probably haul potato chips yeah it's always my, my philosophy i was always building my resume <laughs> so i was like okay so i got it like got trained as a school bus driver and became a a bus driver at 19 and Never had been on a bus as a kid. Of course, I was homeschooled, but I started driving a bus. You know, it's kind of funny. Oh my gosh, it's hilarious. <laughs> For some on a bus, I'm the driver. Uh, um, it's funny. Yeah, in kindergarten and grade 12. And so, and then I got my class one at the same time, which is your CDL down here. And, okay. Um, I failed like five times. It was the hardest thing I ever did. Why? Um, What's so hard? I mean, I, I can't imagine driving one I of those trucks. I just couldn't back up. It's the back. Oh. I, I couldn't do the backup turn around and my instructor. Anyway, there was a lot, but. Anyway, we went down that road, went into school bus driving, horse training, all the stuff, all the blue collar world. And oh gosh. Uh, yeah, eventually we hit the highway when we finally could hit the highway and started to run the highway, which was, I mean, my whole goal. So that was <sighs> and fun. you drove for many years. Yeah, part time and full time, about 14 years. 14 so years. I've had my class one since 19 and I'm turning 40. So, <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. And that was back then you told me all the regulations are different now. So you would, yeah. you would be able to drive more miles and stay awake more hours. Like it's not yes. even allowed anymore. No. And it wasn't technically allowed then, but uh -oh. you can make it work. <laughs> How did you make it work? I no, want to share it. I'm just really good at like, Coloring. Playing the system. Yeah, really good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah, really Tell us good. how you did it. You just log books. You just get really good at figuring out how to make a log book look. Uh -huh. you know? Look and like you slept. Yeah, look like you slept or you stopped. And then like before that, I was running with a one ton. So before I got in the big truck, I started running like at 19, 20, I started running horses across the States. Oh. Um, and that you didn't have to have a log book because we were farm plated. Oh. So I just ran. And that's when I really ran. Like I ran so hard. I'd run California and back, which anyone knows, I think it's like, I should know the mileage, but it's like 3000 miles. Anyway, it's, it's gotta be to at take, least 2,500. Yeah. It's supposed to take Depending six on days where in, in a California. truck. And so I'd run it back and forth in three days with a, with a one ton. I was, I just, I'd hallucinate. I had some crazy drives. So yeah. <laughs> You'd go straight. Yeah. 2,500 miles straight. 
Yeah, I would drive. I I have drove from San Diego back to Edmonton straight without stopping. Yeah, for a party. I had to make it back for a birthday party. Of course. Didn't take very many drinks that night to be pretty, pretty (laughs) out of it. (laughs) Remember that one? That was not. You were up for 24 hours straight? Well, that would have been about 36. 36 36, hours. Yeah, I did a lot of 40 hours. Wow. Yeah, I'd run. Completely insane. Yeah. (laughs) How in the world did you go from trucking to financial advisor? (laughs) Um, so things got slow and I like to be busy. And so I just was looking for something else to do. Um, trucking, you know, I'd be home for three or four days at a time and I just, I don't like time off. Um, so I was like, okay, I need to find something to do. And it's really hard to work around trucking schedule. So I got introduced to the financial services industry. I'm like, you can start part time. It's flexible. I'm like, perfect. It'll give Did me somebody to introduce do. you to it or someone yeah. you knew or yeah, social media saw something about it on social no media. Way. And I reached out and said, hey, like, what are you doing? Uh, tell me more about it. And Adam's like, all right, well, here's what we're doing. And I said, oh, okay. Well, I'll get a license because I always wanted to prove I was smart because um, I was homeschooled. Yeah. So I always wanted to prove I was smart. And so I was like, all right, I'll get a license and I'll, I'll do this thing and see what happens. I mean, I didn't have to quit my day job. So I'm like, whatever. Um, so I started doing both. And yeah, then I fell in love with what we do to help families and Within a year, quit truck driving, came full time, and definitely have never looked back. So, wow. Um, and that's yeah. been how long now? Six years full time, just over six years full time. 2016, I, I quit trucking. So now we're 2020. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, going back to the proving that you were smart, did you get a lot of stigma around homeschooling? I mean, did you actually get a lot of feedback like, oh, yeah. You were homeschooled or like it's not good enough. Or- yeah. So mom and dad, like they had to like move counties in order to legally homeschool at that time. It wasn't legal in the first county they lived in, I guess. I don't remember which county they moved from, but um, it was something about the reason we did it was they couldn't say it was the Lord's Prayer or the Canadian National Anthem in, in my brother's school because he started obviously before me. Um, and so that's why they started the homeschooling. And so then they had to move counties. And so it wasn't like an in thing, like it kind of is now, I guess. So I had a lot of people that would say to me, you know, I remember as a kid growing up and they'd be like, well, you know, I can't, we can't homeschool our kids because they're not going to be socially, whatever the word is. Yeah. And I like talk to them because the parents talking to me and I'm like, well, your kids are in the room because they don't know how to talk to adults and I'm talking to you. Right. So I would kind of throw it back in their face. It's like, so when you were in school, you didn't know anybody who was socially awkward? I mean, that's the dumbest argument. Well, it was just that, you know, they didn't know how to socialize, right? Is a, is a thing was always like, do you know how to yeah. socialize? And I'm like, well, I'm talking to you and I'm yeah. not ta- like, I knew how to socialize with adults as a kid. Maybe I didn't know how to socialize with kids. I probably never had that, but I knew how to socialize with adults. Right. And so, I mean, it served, served me yeah. well. I, I love that yeah. argument because I, I homeschooled only for a couple of years because I couldn't, I didn't, it didn't work out. But um, I remember thinking that. And when I was talking to somebody who was homeschooling their kids for years yeah. and years, forever, um, just like, well, don't you know socially awkward people? They graduated from high school. Yeah. I mean, oh yeah, we do. I mean, there's just yeah. socially awkward people everywhere. Yeah, or, and I used to hide behind matter. doors. I was shy. Yeah. I was super shy. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you maybe had that belief that, oh, maybe I'm not as smart or I No, I just you was ever? super shy. Yeah. <laughs> we just didn't go anywhere. So I was super shy. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Well, now you talk to everybody yeah, all day long, 24-7. Right. Yes, we had to convert. We had it. You can become whatever you want to be. <sighs> I love that. So tell us that first year, so you have the part-time trucking and your part-time... Full-time trucking, part-time uh, right. financial services. What did that look like? Oh, man. So I was running uh, Californian back. So I was running that in a week. So I'd deliver Thursday morning. We had training Thursday night. So I'd go to training and then we'd go with like the meeting after the meeting. So we'd go for wings or whatever else. And then um, I'd hit the highway. So normally I'd get back in my truck at 10 p.m. like Thursday night. I start running. And then I get stopped Friday night. And I did that weekend, week out for about six months. Um, And then, you know, and then I started to see the difference we could make, like I said. And then the day off, I was off. I tried to see as many people as possible. It was Mm -hmm. before our wonderful Zoom world. So everything had to be in person. So I'd see clients or potential clients or whatever all the way down. So I like between the border and, and Edmonton, I'd be stopping at like truck stops. So we'd be doing info gathers at like Denny's or like the truck stops or like the Tim Hortons or whatever my truck could park by. And we were like doing info gathers along the way. It was pretty fun. It was pretty like, it was, funny. Um, it, was it was fun. Like I was like, this, this is, this is fun. So I'd get, 
working both jobs at the same time. I remember pulling over on the side of the road and doing info gathers with my phone up in the visor because like the reception was really bad wherever I was. It was in Nevada. I remember this one. And I was like trying to, I don't, it was just crazy. It was kind of like the, the wild, wild west a little bit. That's when it felt like, <laughs> like the wild, wild west. Now looking back, I'm like, dang, that was crazy. Oh my gosh. Um, but it was fun. Yeah. Uh, and you've you been know? doing it ever since. Yeah. And then, yeah, quit truck driving and came full time and then had to build a business. Um, a, a people business as an introvert. So interesting. Yeah. What was the hardest part? Talking to people. Just talking. Yeah. Just yeah. calling people and talking to you. Yeah. Like this stuff was not who I used to be. Like there's a reason I was a horse trainer, not a horse rider coach. I mean, I was certified to train people, but that wasn't my thing. I like the horses. Like if I could not talk to people, I was happy. Um, wow. And I mean, school bus with kids, they're different than adults. So there was a different relationship there, I think, too. And that was only two hours a day, so I could handle that. Uh, but yeah, when I went out, I had to go out and build my business, cold market, go talk to strangers um, and sell them on a dream, I guess, um, when I was still not sure what I was doing. <laughs> so got a lot of rejection. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Which is fun. I Yeah, so it is fun. So So I love talking to people who have worked on the door-to-door, any kind of door-to-door sales, because they say that same thing. One more no is one more, is one more, you know, one right. more step to a yes or whatever right. it is like the saying that it, they all say. Yeah. All right, I got a no. So I'm closer and closer and closer to a yes. I mean, did you, did you have to, how hard was building that mentality? I, I don't, I well, hate I rejection. Don't, I don't know that I ever actually thought of it that way, to be honest. Like I tell my people that, but I don't know if I ever actually thought that you didn't way. didn't believe that. Um, I just, how to keep working. I don't know that I ever really like, I think where I'm different on some things is I don't really, like you said, I don't negotiate. I don't really negotiate. It wasn't like, Oh, I have to get so many no's. I just need to win. I just want to win. I just got to win. I got to make money. I got to like protect my family. I got to save everybody. So I, I don't know that. I mean, thinking back, I was also highly competitive. So there's a side of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know that I was like, oh, one more no, yay. I don't think I ever thought that. I was like, oh, that mm. sucks. It does um, suck. And I don't remember ever thinking that it, even now, I don't think it, it doesn't suck any less than it did then. Interesting. Um, it hasn't changed. It I'm still like, easier. no, I don't really think so. I'm just better at getting less of them. But when they get them, I'm still not liking them. I don't like when someone says no. Um, to anything. Like, can we have ice cream? Don't say no to me. Like, no, I'll never say no. I know. Way. I know. I love these people. <laughs> uh, they so, always get ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Angela's here. Well, come to Arizona for us ice cream though. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know that it ever got easier. I just think, I mean, I got, I probably tougher obviously about it that I could bounce back. But one of my strengths that I had, and sometimes I think it's a weakness, but it's a strength, um, is my memory I'm not going to say my memory's bad because I've worked on that, but I don't remember some things and um, a lot. And so one of the things that I realized is I also don't really remember perceived rejection the same way because mm. I would talk to other people and how they took it. Like I'd forget, like I prospect the same person. I never door knock, but I go to the mall. I prospect the same person like five times and I didn't remember, like legit didn't remember. They'd be like, you already talked to me like last week. I'm like, oh, well, you didn't give me your number. So like, can we talk now? <laughs> and it was that, like, I just like, wow. I didn't, you know, or I'd be like, it sounds so bad, but I'd be like, are you, are you, what do you do? And they're like, I'm not due. And I'm like, oh, well, anyway, what do you do for work? Like it never really, like, I wasn't like humiliated. I wasn't, I just remember being like, oh, okay. Well, anyway, like moving on. Oh, well, or like when people be like, <laughs> I get their number on my phone again. I'm like, I already talked to you. They're like, yeah. I'm like, oh well, why didn't you answer my phone call? <laughs> like, I wasn't like, oh my gosh, how could I forget you? Even internally, I was just like, wow, I don't remember them. Anyway, so I'm glad they remember me. It's so day one again. Whatever. Yeah, it's kind of like Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> like, whatever, let's do this again. And I do that when I phone people too, because they're like, I told you not to call. And then I'm like, oh, right, I forgot that. All right, I should probably delete that number. <laughs> uh, text only or yeah, or something or like I forget. I just forget. Like I'm like oh, I forget. So sometimes, like I said, I think that's like a good thing. Well, it has been a good thing in some ways that my memory is maybe not what it could be, and, and I'm working on that. Like I said, I'm not trying to say my memory's bad, but like I don't get the same feelings I think as some people do. That like really haunt, haunts me for a long, long period. I'm just like, oh, well, that sucks. Anyway. Moving on. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, because I'm 
180 degrees, like as bad as you could be, you know, or just so hard right. on yourself or so much shame, so much guilt, like just, you know, like just growing up, you know, in the past. Right. So it's really right. interesting to hear somebody who just yeah. doesn't even feel bad if they forget somebody. I, I would be, I would be like so embarrassed and just right. so shame and so, <laughs> so guilty. I'm so sorry that I offended somebody, you know, my yeah. younger self would be. Um, I want to go back to the, you started, you needed to build a business. I was like, let's talk about consistency and discipline. Okay. What you already said was, I want to help families. And I want to save everybody. And I yep. want to save my family, yep. help everybody's family. And I want to save everybody. Yeah. Um, I want to hear more about that. Like what you're doing is not a job. Mm-mm. It's not building a business. Mm-mm. What is it? It's changing the world. But I'll start crying. <laughs> I know, right? I will too. Yeah, it's changing the world, and I—I I mean, that explain what you are. What? How are you helping families? Just because so people um, might not know what a financial planner is. Yeah. So basically, I run a financial company. Yeah. We partner with about fifty of the top financial companies in Canada, one hundred and fifty in the states, and we just find the best option. That's like the nuts and bolts. But what mm-hmm. I love is we're hard into personal development. We're hard into making people better people. We're we're big time into like you becoming the best version of you. And the money and what you get and all that stuff is a byproduct of who you become. Mm-hmm. And we never out earn, we never out work, and we never do anything outside our identity. And so if I can help someone change their identity, like my identity is changing, mm-hmm. then they can start to completely change their life and completely change their family's legacy forever. And so that's what I love. I just love that we can like completely change someone's legacy. It's not about like, oh, they can make a couple hundred thousand or they make a million dollars or whatever. I mean, that's great. I love training people to do that. But like, it's more like, I mean, I shouldn't roll my eyes, but it's more like, what does that do for your family? What kind of impact can that make in your future family? What can you give back? What kind of like difference? Everyone wants to make a difference in the world. Well, how could you do that? And like, this is one way that we're able to just like completely transform. Like I think of some of my agents that, you know, the business wasn't for them, Mm -hmm. but they learned how to like personally develop like affirmations. And so now they have sticky notes in their house. It's like, I am beautiful. I am whatever the Mm. I am's. And they got two young daughters. I think of one of my agents that's very specific Mm. on this. Well, the business didn't work, but man, what she's showing her kids, man, how much of a difference is that going to make in the next generation? Mm. And so that's what, yeah, that's why like, it doesn't feel like work. You're like, man, you work all the time. I'm like, well, not really, but like, um, but it doesn't feel like work even when I work. Cause it's like, man, you're changing lives. You're making a difference. You're making an impact. I've never actually never done a job, um, in my whole life that I, I cared about the money. I never once did I ask, like, I remember all my life I've every job I've done lots. I've never like really asked what I get paid. I don't really care. I'm like, do I want to do the job or do I want to do the thing or yes or no? I don't really care mm-hmm. about the money. Um, and so that's the same thing here. It's money's money's, like I said, the byproduct of who you become and what you do to help others and the value you give back. It's a tool. And it's, yeah, it's just, it's just, um, reflection of that. So yeah, I just love that. So I guess like there was no negotiating. It wasn't cause I wasn't doing it for the money. So I think a lot of times people do things for the money and I'm not saying money, like uh, money's freaking great. We got to make money. But like when you do something just for the money, I don't, I'd have a hard time working through the rejection and working through the nose and working. Cause like I was making, I like you now, like I don't have to work and I'd be fine. I might groceries would be on my table. I have a roof over my head. My, I'd be fine. Um, so like what you need something that drives you more than just like, Oh, I need to make more money. Well, no, that doesn't drive you through like the rejection or through the days you don't want to get out of bed or the days, like you said, the discipline doesn't want to come in because that's just not strong enough for most people. Like, what does the money do for you? Yeah, that could drive you. But what just having like, oh, I just want more money, I want a bigger house or like, no, that doesn't drive most people for any length of time. It's not right. deep enough to drive through the the lack of discipline. Right. So you would equate it to, do, would you say that that's really the key or the, is that the most important part in creating or cultivating your own discipline or, or you know, the most consistency is just having a big enough vision a big enough why I think that that's a huge thing yeah yeah uh, big why and then you know um I was just talking on a call about this this morning having a big why but then also like a reattach you to that obviously every day mm-hmm. and then like I always told myself tomorrow I'd quit tomorrow I'd sleep in tomorrow and I tell myself that still now 
and I, I bought a lot of different things. And it's not like, they're like, well, you're lying to yourself because you know, no, I'm like, no. Because the next day, literally, I'm thinking I can sleep in. Tomorrow, literally, I don't need to make calls. Tomorrow, I literally don't need to talk to people. And I'm, I believe it. Like, I'm like, yeah. And then the next day comes and I'm like, well, God gave me enough strength for today. I guess today I'll make calls. Tomorrow, tomorrow I'll take off. And I honestly, if I look back, they say it takes 21 days to build a habit. Some people, some people say 66. I don't know. I think it took me freaking years, but like now it's a habit. Now it's harder to not do things than to do things. Like I get up, you know, at 420 and it's been years and I like, it's harder to not like, I, I can't really sleep in. I don't really know how. Right. So except for Sunday, I've always given myself Sunday. And for some reason, my brain knows that Sunday it can sleep in. But every other day Amazing. of the week, like it's just not happening. Um, but it's a habit. But when it wasn't a habit, I just like tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Mm. And after years of saying tomorrow, now it's a habit. It's kind of like brushing your teeth. It just becomes a habit. You brush your teeth. You don't think about it. But as a kid, you hate it. And you have to be told to do it over and over and over and over again. And then eventually it's just like, it's just a habit. Um, yeah. and then everything else just becomes a habit. So mm. same as like the gym for me, it's like, okay, tomorrow I won't go tomorrow. <laughs> like everything's mm-hmm. tomorrow. <laughs> Interesting. And that, that's really worked for me to really start to train myself to just do one mm. more day. And then, you know, one more day becomes one more day. And, and then eventually it just becomes routine. Wow. I love that. There's so many good things in there. <laughs> so when we're struggling to build a new habit, really everything is a habit. Yep. And, Good and bad. I think a lot of people don't think of it that way. I really didn't until I read Atomic Habits, mm, you know, James Clear. So mm-hmm. I need to read it again. It's probably been four or five years. Mm-hmm. But I didn't realize how habitual we are. And really, the Everything's most successful people, all they have is just habits. better habits. Yeah. Right? It's all habits. Good and all bad. All of it. All of it's Good habits. Good and bad. Yeah. And um, people are like, I don't have a morning routine. That is your morning routine. Yes, you do. Yeah. Whatever it, it is. Yep. Everyone if it's a snooze it. button, if it's a. Yep. Whatever. Yeah. That's your habit. That's their habit. That's your routine. Yeah, it's your routine. Because yeah. we are definitely habitual people. And that's and yeah. just even that awareness, you yeah. know, the people, that's the first step to learning, right? It's just yeah. awareness. Everything you're doing is a habit. So if you want to change your life and you want to make amazing changes, all you have to do is change your habits. Yes. And then it doesn't seem as daunting. Right. But then all you have to do is be consistent enough for a long enough amount of time where it's But then it, you have to change your identity to change your habits. Ah. That's where it starts to happen. Like your identity needs to change. So like I used to say, you know, I didn't want to work out the gym. This has been my newest habit. I don't want to work out the gym. I, you know, I'm not a gym rat. I'm, I don't like sweat, all this stuff I said. Mm -hmm. And then one day I was like, I need to start going to the gym. So I need to start changing my programming. So I started saying I am a gym rat. I'm freaking ripped. I'm shredded. I'm, you know, all the things that I said I wasn't, I started saying I was while starting to implement the habit. And now like, I love the gym. It's awesome to go. It's fantastic. And I have a lot of fun Um, because I broke change, started to change my programming while changing my action. So my action started to change, but my programming started to change. And that that's where like, I think that the key is too, because people's identity don't, doesn't change. So you're like, oh man, I'm just going to like start eating more healthy. Well, if your identity isn't that you're super healthy, you're not going to quit. You're not going to keep eating healthy. You're going to go back. Because your identity determines what you do. Oh, I'm a saver. Well, if you say you're a saver, you'll be a saver. But if you say like, I'm going to start to try to save. But if you're really thinking like you're a spender, you're going to keep spending. Mm -hmm. Like it's all our identity decides what happens with our habits. Mm -hmm. So our habits are a reflection. Like our habits create our life, but our our life, like our mindset creates our habits. It's true. It's like the chicken and the egg. Yeah. Which one comes first? Yeah. So you did them both at the same time. So you change your, what you're saying to yourself and the same day. I mean, was it the same day or did you have to kind of work yourself up to go into the gym? Um, one of my friends said, we're going to go sign up today. And I said, okay. So I signed (laughs) up and there I was. And then I committed. So one of the other things that I think I do, I've really tried to analyze. One of the things that I do is I don't actually set really high and lofty goals right away. So Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, if I'm going to sign up to the gym, I'm going to come one day a week. Okay. So that's all in my, that was all I was committed to. I went to, they had a personal trainer, like break in the gym and they're like, what are you committed to? I'm like one day a week. She's like, well, can you commit tomorrow? I'm like, no, the reason I can't is because like I've done, I told her I did 75 hearts. She said, well, then you can for sure commit to more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, well, no, the problem is when I do 75 hard, what the first thing that I cut is my sleep and I know I need my sleep. So I cannot cut my sleep. So if I decide the gym is the thing, my sleep is going to get cut. Mm-hmm. And so I can't commit to five days a week, I said to her, or I'm going to cut out my sleep. She's like, okay. So 
but then it's funny because while in my mind I committed to one, then if I went more days, I was like, Ooh, I'm winning. Um, and started going three days, start going four days, start going five days, mm. but I was only committed to one. Mm. So I was winning. So I'm now I'm like confident. I'm like, I'm better. I'm awesome. I'm killing it. And so I, you know, I did the same thing when I was prospecting, I committed to three new numbers a day, but there was a couple of days I got 25. Well, there my identity changes. That's when your identity starts to shift. So I, I've never been one of the ones that's like, okay, I'm going to like completely change my whole life tomorrow. Now I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do like one thing. And then I change like a whole bunch. And then I'm like, wow, like I am so awesome. So now I have self-confidence mm -hmm. and self-confidence keeps you doing the right thing. A lot of times people don't do the right thing because their confidence is low. Their self-belief is low. And one of the things that I also feel I've always had, and thankfully to my parents is self-belief. Mm. That's something I don't think I've ever really struggled with. Mm. Um, I've always known if I wanted to do anything, I could do anything. Mm -hmm. And so and I, I, I attribute that to my parents because a lot of that is your upbringing. Mom and dad didn't understand anything I really did. They didn't. They're like, what are you doing now? Okay, um, alien I don't did think we this raise? is good. Yeah. But they never <laughs> said I couldn't. It was just like, I don't know that truck driving by yourself like, as a 25 year old in downtown LA is probably the safest thing. Um, <laughs> you know, it's more like, I don't, except a lot more like passionate about that, yeah. but <laughs> I mean, was, like, I don't know about training horses. You broke your back, you broke your arm, maybe not the best uh, anyway. Yeah. So I don't think they understood it, but they never said you couldn't. Mm. And so I really, you know, I, I'm really, I'm really thankful for that because self-belief is something that I think a lot of people struggle with. Mm. And you know, some of the ways to build self-belief is keeping the promises to yourself. Mm -hmm. So part of my self-belief and my self-confidence is I set really low promises to myself, to be quite honest. Mm. And then I achieve them That's and I crush really them. That's really good advice though. Mm -hmm. Just have a small win. Yes. And like, then I'm like, okay, you today I'm going to make like five calls a day, knowing that I should probably make like 25. Whereas I see a lot of people that are like, oh my gosh, tomorrow I'm going to make like a hundred dials. I'm like, are you? You've made like two. Mm -hmm. Like, where is that? Like, how is your identity going to change that much? You can do it, but if you don't have a lot of self-control, especially you got to like little wins and just keep stacking your little wins mm -hmm. until they, you know, until you start to be like, well, I can do that. I can do this. I can do that. I can do this. I can do that. I can do this. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, okay, well now I can do it all. But like, I think too many people, like I said, have really tried to analyze where this stuff comes from. And I see too many people that are like, okay, I'm going to start going to the gym like three hours a day. Well, no, you're not. No. Like that's where I also let myself off at the gym. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go for like 20 minutes a day. And that's about all I go. 20, 30 minutes. As we know, we go out yeah. and I, I can do that though. That's all I'm you like, need. that's, that's good. But you know, but for some people that seems like, well, then I, they just like, you got to set littler wins. Like little things. I think that's like, so important. Like, okay. You know, and I know I've, I got a lot of friends that deal with, um, different addictions. And I, I'm a very, I was just talking to one of them today. I'm a very addictive personality person myself, <laughs> good and bad, I guess. And so like one of the things for that is like little wins, like just, you know, tomorrow you'll do whatever. Like I, it's just little wins. I just think people try to go too big, too fast. They're like, okay, I'm never going to drink hard. again. Well, no, but you just say, I'm never going to drink for one more day, one yeah. more hour, one more smoke, one more, like just one more one like the power of one more like Ed Milet yeah super great powerful book, by the way yeah it's a very good book highly Amazing recommend book. <laughs> um I just wanted to clarify because I know what you do but you just said I my goal was to get three numbers get, like sounds it sounded so funny I'm like I got three numbers I sometimes I would get 25 just explain what that means <laughs> sure so, getting numbers that sounds weird uh, so I was building my business so I didn't go make friends so I'd go up to people and basically strangers strangers and be like hey you know or you open a new opportunity you want to make more income um and then they say yes or no if they said yes then I'd get their number and so yeah my commitment was three new numbers from strangers every day to start to build you know, and now on my phone, I think I have over 7,500 new num or numbers, period. I don't know, new, obviously yeah. not all new, but I have a lot of numbers. Wow. Um, but that was creating that habit of like talking to three new, well, I didn't talk to three new people, probably talked to like 30 people to get three new numbers, but wow. like I had to get three new numbers. Um, and then when I went out to get 25, that was like I said, where identity starts to change. Wow. When you really do something no one else will do, you know, you deserve to have it, what no one else will have. And you start to build a confidence that's like unshakable. Yeah. And I think too many people also don't do that. They don't look at what they're doing right. They look at what they're doing wrong. And their confidence keeps getting hit because they're like, oh man, I didn't do this or I didn't do that. Instead of, well, yeah, but what did you do? You showed up to absolutely everything. I tell some of my team this. I'm like, here's your strength. 
here, yeah, you know your weaknesses. Everyone seems to know that, but here's your strength. Build on your strengths. And too many people, I feel like, build on their weaknesses or try to make their weaknesses. But if you build on your weaknesses, then your strengths come down mm -hmm. to match, as opposed to just building your strengths stronger and stronger and stronger. Mm. And so I know one of my strengths is consistency and discipline. I know that. So I build on it. I'm like, all right, let's add more discipline. Let's add more consistently. Let's add some of my weaknesses. I'm like, oh, I don't even, I'm like, whatever. They'll, they'll come along for the ride <laughs> eventually. They'll, they'll catch up. Um, yeah, they'll still be yeah, there. They'll, they'll be there. Yeah, they're, they're good. And um, <laughs> but I think that people don't do that. They don't like really look at what they're doing right. right. And then that keeps knocking them back down as opposed to like, like if I had done that, even when I was going, there was a lot of people coming in the business um, that were passing me, that were making more money, they were going faster, all this stuff. And then they weren't working as hard as I was. But I kept hearing if I if I worked really hard, I would win. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, and I keep reminding myself, Angela, you're working harder than they are. Even a blind squirrel can find a nut. So if you're really, really just outwork them for a consistent length of time, you're going to competitive, you're going to beat them. Mm -hmm. And, um, and in our space, everyone can win. So I was like, I can, and you know, some of these people now we we've, we've crushed them <laughs> in a loving kind <laughs> left way. Them in the desk Lo loving years kind ago. Way. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, we just did outwork them. We yeah. outworked them physically, but like also like mentally and, and just growing ourselves and growing our personal development and becoming a different identity. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's your identity shifts, your results shift. Totally. That's what's so amazing about the organization that you're involved with. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about when your legs gave out. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was fun. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> so um, the first time that I remember was um, 2018, July 1st, which is Canada Day. And, um, which is like your America day, July 4th. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. And so we, we, uh, one of my friends moved my bed for me. So I was like, okay, well, thanks for moving my bed. I'll take you out for some beers. And so we went out for like lunch and some beers and it was like a really hot summer day. And we're like, oh, this was going down really good. And I hadn't drank a lot for a while at that point. So I was like, okay, well, this is going down good. Like I could, let's, like, let's party tonight. A couple. Yeah. And so he's like, oh, I'm going out with some guy friends and like, you want to come? And I used to, like I said, I was, I was raised around rodeos. So I was like, hanging out with the guys is my thing. So I was like, yeah, let's do this. So I hung out with him and his friends and we were doing shots and like was, <laughs> shots we, of what? All, I don't know. But no, they were like, they were getting pretty hammered. And obviously if they were, I definitely was. <laughs> and, um, like, well, I remember one shot of like Moscato, like we did the whole, I did the whole bottle like, straight up. <laughs> And, uh, anyway, so I was, I was definitely drinking and, uh, well, we went down in addition to all the shots and the beers you had and all it's in addition oh, to yeah. everything. You just downed a I whole bottle downing. of Moscato. Yeah, we were like, I was, I was drinking and, um, we went down to the, we went down to do, watch the fireworks. And then on the way back, like, I just remember I couldn't walk. And so two of the guys that were there, my friend was, you know, um, hooking up with some girl or something. So he, he was gone, but two of his guy friends were really nice guys and they came up beside me and they started like putting their arms around and like helping me up. Mm -hmm. And I just remember being so embarrassed because like, I'd never been that girl. Like when I, I used to drink like that all the time. Um, and we've been sober since 2018, but, um, and I'm really glad for that. But like, I used to drink like that. I was like, I've never been like carried. This was crazy. Mm -hmm. And so they're dragging me and I'm really embarrassed. Like I'm trying not to cry. Cause I was like this, and I wish they would have just let me die beside the tree. Like that's really what I felt like. Like, just let me figure this out. Cause I'm not that I don't like help on that level. Mm -hmm. And so that was hard for me. Anyway, they dragged me. I carried my shoes cause I had little flip flippers and they dragged me coming out to the house. Like my toenails had rubbed off, um, on some of my toes because they just dragged me on the cement. They had Ow. no idea. They had no idea that they were dragging me like that. Right. Like, they had no idea that it was because I wasn't saying a freaking word. I was just so embarrassed. And like, obviously I was very drunk, but I was so embarrassed. And I was like, man, this is alcohol poisoning. Like, what is wrong with me? Right. Anyway, and they dragged me back and they get me an Uber. And like to show you that I wasn't actually out of it on the way back from the Uber ride, I got the guy's number on the Uber <laughs> like my Uber driver, like I wasn't out of trying it. I just couldn't him. walk. Oh yeah. I was trying to recruit him. And, uh, you know, I went to bed and next morning I woke up and I'm totally fine and everything's good. And I was like, like, I never had hangovers most of my life. So I was like, no hangover. Like, uh, oh man, that was weird. Okay. Well I drank a lot. So I'm like, okay, well I guess I was really drunk. And then August, 2018, we went out to, um, our Vegas convention, annual Vegas convention. And we had a pool party. I had about four beer, start walking back to my room and I start stumbling all over the place. Thanks to this guy showed up from our team and he kind of carried me back to my room and threw me in. Um, and I just knew the way he looked at me. I was like, that was that drunk girl. I was like, no, nah, I had four beer. I'm not that drunk mm -mm. girl. 
And I was like, oh, so something's off. So I lay there and I cried. I just remember bawling. Um, and then 20 minutes later, I was fine. I was like, all right, away I go again. And so, um, I was like, all right, well, that was the last time I touched alcohol. I'm like, all right, well, maybe I just can't drink. So I'm like, done. Okay. So that was done. And then, um, and then I would go out still, I was prospecting a lot. I was building a business by this point. You know, we were, um, junior brokers with our firm. Um, we were close. We hit our senior broker promotion. So we had a business, but I was still prospecting hardcore because I was, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a hustling. So I was out, I was out shopping for people. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. That's I go out funny. making friends. Yeah. Or it's like, I'm out at the mall and they're like, are you shopping? I'm like, yeah. For people. For people. <laughs> um, <laughs> for hilarious. my best friends. And they became my best friends. It's pretty cool. Anyway, so I was out wandering around trying to find new people to make friends with. And, um, and then my legs again would start to give out. I started to get blurry and I'm like, oh man. And I get back to my car and I'd barely make it. Like it'd be rough and I'd like get in my car and have to put my feet like on in my car and pick them up. And I'd just sit there and I ball and I'm like, what is wrong with me? And this is how much later than August? How much so later? this would be like in that winter. Yeah. Okay, that throughout winter. that winter. Okay. A few yeah. months later. Yeah. And you didn't have any symptoms for no. a few months straight. Well, like it would be a little bit, but this is where it kept getting kind of worse, I guess. Um, and then I was like, oh, this is so weird. And then um, I brought one of my friends out with me. We were out prospecting. I'm like, do you, like, is it just me in my head? Like, am I totally? He's like, no. Like, he helped carry me back to my car. And I was a friend. I'm like, can you see? He's like, yeah, there's something off. I'm like, okay. So not just completely in my head because I was like, is it on my head? Like, I don't really understand what's going on. Right. And because uh, I feel fine. I just not walking. I'm like, this is weird. So I'm like, okay, well, I quit riding horses at this point. So I was like, well, maybe I'm just really out of shape. I'm like, All right, I'll go to the gym. So I go to the gym, get on the little like bike machine and I go bike, bike, bike. And then like <laughs> my leg just starts like vibrating like this. And I'm like, Whoa, is that normal? Like, I don't know. I've never been to a gym. Never... So I like video it. I send it to my like fitness buff friends. And I'm like, Hey, is this like normal? They're like, no, but none of them had any idea. They're just mm-hmm. like, Oh, they just kind of laughed. They're like, no, I'm like, ah, oh, weird. And then like my vision would go blurry again too. And I'd like stumble and it'd be like, like I was drunk and I was like, this is so weird. And so we, we started going through testing and, and that was like texting my hip. I'm like, well, maybe I've got arthritis. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what's causing me to fall. Like what is causing me to not be able to walk? I don't know. So um, crazy. started going through the MRIs and, um, you know, and then my mom got on things and things went really fast. And my mom started calling the doctor to say, Hey, what's up? Um, mama bear is on mama, the job. mama bear is really mm-hmm. good at this. Like she should start a business. She's really good at getting doctors to get answers. Wow. And so my, my doctor, my middle doctor, neurologist doctor, he called me while on vacation. When mom gets on things like <laughs> <he's>, <laughs> you're calling on, us back. He's calling. So she, he called me. He's like, I think it's, you know, I think it's MS. Um, we're doing a few more tests. And by this time, like I'd been doing some research, I figured this what it was. And so yeah, June, 2019, um, got diagnosed with MS and May 25th, 2019 was the last time I've been able to wear high heels, which I'm okay with. I'm good without it. Now I've actually gone from like dress boots to like runners. I'm like, why do I even wear dress boots? Like it's just runners all the time. Um, I'm like getting more and more comfortable. <laughs> like, wow. I don't really care anymore. Just no. all about comfort. Be careful. Um, yeah, be comfortable. Yeah. I just like, it's funny. Cause you just don't really care about stuff after a while. There's more important things to worry about. Totally. And so and tennis yeah. shoes are super cool. They look, yeah. They look awesome. Now. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> got, so yeah, I got diagnosed in June, 2019, hit her hundred K, um, in her business, six figures, um, September while I was kind of in Italy, and, um, yeah, life started to change 2020. Our business shot up 167%. I started taking Sundays off, um, really stepped into the power of, um, a higher power and a higher strength. And, um, that's really what gets me through most of the days. You really reconnected with your faith. Did you have a period yeah. of your life where you didn't want no. anything to do with it? No, or? I never no. left it. I've never, okay. no, I never became a Christian, um, at three. And I still remember I was bawling anyway. Um, wow. and I can't believe you remember that. Yeah. I, I, I said, it, I said it at two, but I don't remember two, but I do remember three mm-hmm. and got baptized at 12 and, um, yeah, never, never, never went away from that. Okay. My mom and dad thought I did because I was living some pretty crazy lifestyle, but <laughs> I was never away from it inside. But yeah. like I read about the power of prayer, um, 2020 and just really sunk into that. My, my parents named me Angela because it means God's messenger, not because mm. it just happens to mean that it's because it means that. Mm. And so I was like, okay, well, I was named to be God's messenger. I'm named to be that. I need to really step into that. I'm here for a purpose. I'm here for a reason, which by the way, everybody is. Mm. And you know, if you're not here for a purpose, you wouldn't be here. So, you know, um, so I'm here for a purpose 
And I was like, all right, I need to step into that purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, And through the MS, I just realized that, you know, there's, I could physically make things happen before. I could outwork, I could out hustle, I could out do whatever everyone. And when my legs got taken out from under me, I realized I couldn't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So I had to start to rely on a higher power Mm -hmm. um, and really start to think about like what, what caused the MS? Why did I bring it into my life? What was my identity? And, you know, we're still working through that, obviously, that that journey. <laughs> right, right. It's yeah. been really difficult three years. It's been interesting. I don't know about difficult, but t- interesting. I know she doesn't like to say it's hard or bad no. or difficult. No, because <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little lesson in there, kids. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody listening? <laughs> Reframing is a big, you know, big part mm-hmm. of her success, I think. Well, let's just talk about that. Sure. So why not? Why don't you say it's been hard? It is hard. You, um, your legs don't work all the time. You have fallen well, down have middle, legs. Mid, mid, tons of times. <laughs> so it's just a reframing. Walk us through it. Though, I have for legs. somebody who's okay. saying, I am so <laughs> sick. I'm so tired. I'm so, uh, I hate this thing that's happening to me in my life. Help them. Mm. What do you say instead? <sighs> okay. Here's what helped me and everyone's in different positions. And so what I might say might not help you, but what helped me was one of the first things I was told was, you know, it's okay to have a down day. Mm-hmm. It's okay to sit on the couch and eat a bowl of ice cream and, or a gallon of ice cream for that matter. Sure. That's what they said and cry. And then the next day you got to get back up. And that was told to me by someone that has MS is very successful mm. um, and doesn't let him really stop him. And it's had mm. it for a long time. And so I was like, he understands what I feel. He understands what I'm going through. Um, and he told me that. So I was like, okay, perfect. So I can be like, I can cry. I'm okay with mm. that. That was really helpful for me to know. And it still is for me to know that I can cry. So to I just can, power through yeah, and pretend it's, it's fine yeah, and, and never have a down moment. Oh, but the thing is, hallelujah. once you have it, you have to get back up and go. Mm. And so there are days like, while I say it's not difficult for sure. There's days that are tougher than others. Mm-hmm. Um, there's moments, I don't know about whole days, but definitely moments like, man, you pee yourself in public. It's not exactly fun. Yeah, um, you did do that. <laughs> and then we put it all over social media because like, <laughs> this is what we do. It's um, helps people. It helps yeah, it people. helps people, right? Yeah. Um, no but, one else would do that. And so we see somebody doing that and go, oh, oh it's okay. I'm okay. I'm yeah. not alone. Yeah, it's, and I had so many moms reach out to me because I guess moms have that happen too. So they're like, they oh. They do. She's like, they're like, yeah, I said a lot of moms reach out about that um, situation. Mm. And I just feel like, like I said, God brings stuff in our life. Challenges are meant to make us tougher. They're meant to make us rely on him. We can choose to make, you know, to have him make us better, or we can choose to have him make us better. Mm. And, you know, I just don't think anyone's given a challenge that they aren't able to conquer or they wouldn't be given it. Mm. And I'm not saying that God gave me this challenge. I'm saying for me though, I did bring it on myself. And so there's a lot of responsibility. So how did this happen to me? It didn't, it happened for me. And mm-hmm. I brought it on. I, you know, through my conscious, through my, con- I'm not saying everyone's like this either, but for me, I know that I brought it on by my thoughts, where I was at my identity. I needed this. And so I'm not saying I, I'd hope to be healed by now. I was like, Oh, this will be like a little walk in the park. Um, it's not been, Mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, and I don't know where it'll go a hundred percent, but I do know that there's a purpose Mm -hmm. and I do know that everything happens for a reason. And I wouldn't be where I'm at right now if it wasn't for it. I would not have grown. I would not have had the growth because like I said before, I just could physically make everything happen. And now Mm -hmm. because I can't physically make things happen, I've had to rely on other people. I've had to ask for help. I have to be okay with asking for help. Mm Um, and that in and of itself was hard, but the cool thing is if you ask for help, you have a lot more people and what you can do by yourself is nowhere near what you can do with other people. Mm-mm. You know, personally, I hate the term like self-made mar- I hate millionaire. It too. I hate it. Cause I I'm just like, said it on team- Friday. It's no such thing. No, it's a team made millionaire. And it's always. like, it's always like, and so now like I saw my team, my team wouldn't be the team they are mm. if I wasn't the person that I am because of what I'm going through. Wow. You know, and, and they're freaking amazing. And because of that, but they, they're there for me, my friends, like people like you, like I wouldn't connect to people the same way mm. through your weakness. You connect to people, mm. not through your strengths the same way. One of my favorite sayings is never deny a person the opportunity to give mm-hmm. because if somebody wants to help you, they want to, yes, they want they that to. they need it. Mm-hmm. They want to feel good about it. They want yeah. to help and should never, ever deny anybody the opportunity to serve. Right. And 
it's so hard for some people to it ask is. for help. It's like, it I don't, I want to be independent. Those, I was one of those yeah. people. Yeah, I used um, to be too. And I still, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I still have that side of me for sure, but as I have to get help sometimes. So yeah. I've learned that I have to. So when it becomes, I have yeah. to, you just do it. Do. And, and then the more you do, the more you're like, <laughs> everyone help doing everything. Like I'm good. This is <laughs> this awesome. Is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like I used to have to carry my bags all the time. Now I'm the first one on the plane. I'm the first one off the plane. I'm like, this is awesome. I'm just going to yeah. make up a disease that I have. So I have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everyone will do everything for me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Just kidding. I won't yeah, be doing that. no. <laughs> oh, I love People that. do do that though. They manifest the disease, and, and it happens. Yeah, it. yeah. And then it happens. Oh, Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, and it's like it's, made up their mind that yeah. they're sick and they stay sick forever. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like our mind is just. I guess that's the biggest thing. Like I read, becoming supernatural, mm. um, right after I got diagnosis, and how we stress ourselves to the point of an autoimmune. And I'm like, yeah, I totally did that. That's why I mm. said I bring it on myself. Like we do that. We bring on stuff ourselves all the time. But the cool thing is if we bring things on, we can also get rid of them. Mine can also get rid of it. Yeah. I love that. Um, I I forgot what I was going to say. I'm, I'm studying with Marissa Peer. She wrote a book called tell yourself a better lie, right? Because it's exactly everything that we're talking about right now. Your mind created it. Yeah. And so your mind can also take it away. Right. And solve it and heal it. And, um, it's really powerful. She's been doing this for a long time. So she has a lot of evidence in real life of people, you know, um, breaking away from depression and releasing their anxiety and releasing their addictions and they're releasing their, you know, drug addictions and alcohol and smoking all of it. Um, anorexia, bulimia, so many amazing things. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I wanted to, oh, I wanted to explain what you're actually doing. You were literally working seven days a week, mm-hmm. all the 16 day, 16 hours a day, probably like all, all the time. day, sun all up to sun down. down to midnight. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what she means is like that she literally worked every all the time. second of every day. And so I was really happy that you decided to take Sundays off. Cause I yeah. think I, hopefully that maybe I was a little bit of a, you need to take a day off. You need to rest. You need to like, I said that when I first met you, I was like, Ooh, yikes, you're going to burn out. I'm, I'm afraid for your health. I'm afraid, you know, I want you to be healthy and happy and, yeah. and have a rest day, you know? So then she finally did. So I'm really happy about that. I'm glad. Um, and you're also being more intentional about just being with people and just, yeah. just creating memories and creating mm-hmm. relationships that meaningful relationships. Mm-hmm. And when did you start creating that intention? When did you intentionally say, that's what I'm going to do? Um, was, that a, was it an intention or like a Well, our word moment? for this year is present. Oh, I love that. Um, and I mean, it's kind of been there for a while, but I don't know. I think it's, it's more recent that's really getting forefront. Um, 2020, like I said, reading the book mm-hmm. and the biggest change where like, I was like, well, if I don't have my legs and we want to triple our business, which we didn't in 2020, but we did a lot more than most people thought we could have. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I always have the big vision, but I was like, all right, I need to rely on a higher power and you know, I need to rely on a higher power, which is prayer I really stepped into that. But then also like mm-hmm. I can do the same amount of time with someone that's like maybe lower income. If we want to go like that or lower identity, I prefer that or a higher identity and get like completely different results. Same amount of time, totally different results. Mm. And I was like, okay, well, if I hang around higher quality people or higher identity people, I prefer that higher identity people, then I could become more higher identity Mm -hmm. and then my results will be better. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, so I need to like become friends with like John Maxwell and Milet, um, two of the guys that I really look up to. And I was like, okay, well, we were already scheduled to go to Ed's house 2020. So we went to his Laguna Beach house in 2020. And then, um, then I signed up to go see John Maxwell, which was a huge thing for me, $20,000 plus investment. And I, mm-hmm. you know, had just crossed hundred K. So it's pretty major, um, investment to go to some event. But I wanted to like, I wanted to be in those circles. I wanted to be in those rooms. Cause I was like, if I'm hanging around people like that, I'm going to become like them, totally. become like our identity. So our like our, our association. So I like, 100%. that was a huge shift for me. I feel like 2020 was massive on that. Like I remember coming into January, I need better associations. I need to up my associations. I need to be very intentional on that, um, that step of it. And then, and then I felt like I said, God wanted me to take Sundays off to prove that he was control and not just me. 
Um, and that was the hardest year to take Sundays. I mean, it was so hard taking Sundays off. I had so many people like, the only day I can meet you is on Sunday. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm booked. And I'm looking at an empty schedule. I'm like, <gasps> booked. Took a lot of faith. Took a lot of, yeah, and, and discipline again. <laughs> discipline. I'm like, all right, next Sunday. <laughs> Next Sunday, I'll work a couple Next hours. Sunday. I'll take a couple appointments. Yeah, maybe I'll do it. And yeah. I just, but I wouldn't. I was like, oh, you know what? I can do it one more. Come on. And I knew, I also know that I couldn't do a couple appointments. I'm not that person. I'm all, all or, nothing. or nothing. So I was like, if I do two, I'm doing nine. Like Sundays were my busiest day before because like a lot of people are off on Sunday. So right. it makes sense. And um, I'm like, okay, so if I do one, I'm doing all. It's not like, oh, I could just do one. No, because then it's like, well, why didn't you do that one? If you can do that one, why don't you do that one? Is that person better than that person? Like, like that's how my mind would right. work. And so I was like, so I just had to be like, none. And now we've caught a little bit, like we did an event on a Sunday. Like, I feel like I'm a little bit more like, okay, I'm not doing appointments, but there's a little bit more flexibility now. Mm. I've got past a little bit of like all or nothing mm. <laughs> kind of concept on that. But I, at the time I had to like, I knew my weakness mm. and I knew what I couldn't do and could do kind of like alcohol I cut off alcohol mm -hmm. it's not like I can't have one drink but like why of course you can yeah and so I just cut it all off and now like I said I'll never go back Hate it yeah um I just wanted to reiterate the the message that you got saying I knew that I needed to take Sundays off so that I would know God is in charge and not myself can you elaborate a little bit about that? Was there a moment? Was there mm -hmm. a book? How to book? So that book, The Circle Maker, The Circle which Maker, I, you have. I do have. <laughs> yeah. I need to um, read it. It's my favorite book. I read it every New Year's. It's mm. like it's my favorite, um, and it talks about the power of God. And for instance, like the walls of Jericho, when you like marched around it like six times, and then they blew the trumpet. Like if you actually sit back and look at it, you're like. That's kind of crazy. Um, so there was no negotiating that that was the power of God. And then there was mm. another war that was like with Gideon and he started out with a whole bunch of, of army and they cut him back to 300. He had him like lapping in the water and like drinking from their hands. Like that's how he like split the army. It was so crazy. Like mm. when you think about it, you're like, and he had like 300 people to take out like this massive army because he wanted no one to doubt that it was God. Mm. And so like there's, and I could go on and on. There's so many stories like that. And I was like, this was one of them. Like before that, before the MS, like I said, I could outwork. I could work 16, 20 hours a day. I had no problem working like all the freaking time. Mm -hmm. Well, if you put that together with, I could get like 25 numbers in a day. If I went out and actually put my mind to it and got 25 numbers in a day for like half a year, I could literally f like make this thing multi-million mm -hmm. fast. Mm -hmm. So when I couldn't do that, it was like, oh, now I can't do that. I physically can't now make it happen. And so that's where I'm like, okay. So God's like, hey, you can't physically make it happen. I'm going to take one more from you. I want to even take a day off. I want you to, you know, really like come to church and do my thing and, and be part of it and let, mm -hmm. let people know that this isn't like you are going to be, you're going to do all these things and help a lot of families, but it's not you. <laughs> Before that, I could have said it was me. Yeah, I, mm. I can outwork. I, I'm, I'm pretty awesome. I did that. My, I'm self-confident. There's that self-confidence and stuff like that. And now it's like, no, like I know so many days that they're just a miracle, you know, that it's a miracle that I can get out of bed every morning. You know, it's, you know, and some days, you know, things don't want to work. And so it's like, it's a miracle that I'm, you know, able to do what I'm doing. And so, yeah, I just knew that. And then, yeah, obviously like stuff like now, being able to tell people that, mm. Um, and that's where, like, I felt like uh, that 2020, that was my first New Year's I spent by myself with no cell. And now that's my new thing. And I just was, like, really intentional and, like, where am I going? Like, I, I cried a lot that day and a lot of stuff because that was my first New Year's, you know, since I got diagnosed and really facing, like, what was happening. Mm. Um, and, you know, I was like, this is here for a purpose. And it's for a higher cause. Mm. And, you know, the people that inspire people the most normally go through the most challenges mm -hmm. so I'm like I can choose to make this inspirational or I can choose to make this my detriment and so I just chose at that time to like step into the the calling wow that's so beautiful and you do inspire a lot of people and I love seeing it and seeing just even the stuff on social media the things that you post in your videos and seeing the comments of people going, wow, I, I, mean, I can't believe you're doing that, or you really helped me today, or, you know, whatever. You probably get a, a lot of private messages that I don't see, but how rewarding is that? It's, it's so good, and like I said, it's just, 
Uh, and sometimes I have to remember, and that's the intentional part. Like sometimes it becomes easy still to focus on the success, which dollar sense kind of success mm -hmm. and not just take us back and be like, Hey, just provide value. Hey, mm -hmm. just, just be you and, and think about, um, like we we're talking about the other day for, for social media. I'm like, yeah, it, obviously business is in there too, but like, what's your purpose? Your purpose is not to your business. Your purpose is to change the world. To help. And to help change, you know, people's lives. And so I'm like, okay, well, I got to remember that every time I do a post. Sometimes I forget. But I got to remember that when I'm like, so I'm, that's why I try to be more and more intentional about like the little things that really add up to the big things. And how has it affected your just overall life? Um, that since that, you know, since that intention, since that moment, since that book, and, you know, taking the Sundays off, putting it in God's hands, part of it in God's hands, I mean, you still, you still yeah. have that balance. It's like, how do you reconcile You've that gotta, balance You got to pray like it depends on God and work like it depends on you. Oh, I love that. That's, That's from the so book. Good. <laughs> That's from the book. That's Say Mark it again. Pray. pray like it depends on God and work like it depends on you. <sighs> oh, I got just got so <laughs> so It's so good. It's a good book. I got to read that freaking book. <laughs> I bought it so because good. you told me to. I know. I haven't read it yet. <laughs> so oh, good. There's so many books I haven't read. I told John I'm going to take a year off and I'm going to read just every read single books. book I've bought. <laughs> every shelf, every, everywhere, everything in my house is filled with books I haven't read yet. I still do read a lot, but do. every time yeah. I finish one, I've already bought three that week. I know, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> the same. Oh, oh man. It's awesome. I yeah. love that. That's so beautiful. So what has, what's been the biggest difference? Like since this new way of reframe or new way or new, I don't know what to call it, giving up. Praying like it, mm -hmm. it depends on God and working as like if it depends, it depends on, on you. you. What's the biggest difference? How has it been different? Um, I just see miracles happen, I guess, mm. you know, and things that like my life where it's at now. I mean, even being here with you guys like mm. six years ago, I wouldn't have dreamt that my life would be what it's at right now. Mm. And I mean, we're just getting started and I know that. And I'm like, man, like... People are like, what's your life going to look like in five to 10 years? I'm like, I have no clue. No idea. I have no clue. Like if it, at the pace it's going, like I, I can't even visualize honestly where, mm -hmm. where it could be. Um, and you know, that, that's, that's really cool. Um, something that I'm really working on, like I said, is just relying more on the higher power mm -hmm. and having more of a peace instead of, I do still try to make things happen mm -hmm. instead of allow things to happen. And it's such a fine line for sure, mm -hmm. but you can feel the difference inside. Mm -hmm. Might not be an outside difference, but there's definitely an internal difference. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that um, I've been working on changing my emotional home. And so becoming different inside, mm -hmm. like, you know, outside had to change, you know, three years ago or whatever. Now the inside is working on changing along with the outside. Aren't we all <laughs> yes. always working on <laughs> always changing working the on inside changing. Yes. all the time. Yeah. Yes. Growth. Yeah. Intentional growth. Intentional growth. Yeah. I love that. So beautiful. If someone listening is um, suffering or working through a, an autoimmune disease, mm. what advice would you give them? A uh, couple pieces of advice, I guess. Um, step into like, I don't know, try to figure out, I don't know how to put this, try to figure out where, you know, where it came from. Um, for me, that's like been helpful. Mm. And, you know, and then, and then work on like two couple things, obviously your mindset, mm -hmm. what, what can you do to improve your mindset? Is it, you know, surrounding yourself with people? A tip is to surround yourself with people that have the same thing you have, but are positive about it. That's really helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, and surround yourself with, like I said, good books, good audio, something that makes you lift up. At the same time, though, like, I do feel the gym is awesome. Watching what you're eating, watching your diet. I mean, everyone should be doing all these things. But, like, sometimes it takes a, a rude awakening to get you there faster. Right. But really stepping into that and then realizing that you wouldn't be given the challenge you're given unless you were strong enough to handle it. Mm. And so use that to empower you, not to disempower you. If things are tough, it's because you can handle it. And there's always someone that has it worse than you. It's another one too that helps me. Like I think of like, um, like when my legs don't work, I'm like, well, at least I have legs, you know, and there's some people that lose their legs. They don't even have legs. Like I think of like Nick Santosios, like he didn't even have legs and he's pretty freaking awesome. 
And like, you know, there's other people that have lost their limbs. There was a, there's a mountain climber that was speaking at an event and he had got his, like he fell under a rock or anyway, he doesn't have legs. I'm like, well, he doesn't have legs. Like, what am I complaining about? So my legs don't work, but at least I got them and they work most of the time. Mm -hmm. So like, so it's like, it's all in perspective. Like, what are you looking at? What you don't have or what you do have? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's pretty good shit. (laughs) (laughs) So good. (laughs) So good. Uh, Thank you so much for being here and sharing all that with us. I mean, there's a lot of incredible wisdom that, you know, maybe you recently had because of your MS diagnosis and all the reading and all the works. And you're like, you're really wise. You're a really wise girl. So thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you for being here. So excited Mm -hmm. you came to visit and um, tell everybody how they can find you. Oh, they can call you and give them, give them your number, give them yeah. your num- their <laughs> number, their number. Yeah. Can we give you your number? Text her uh, at. Text, no. text, yeah. <laughs> um, you want to change your life. Call her. No. Call her. Yeah. Instagram is probably the best. Yeah. Um, at real Angela Bradford yeah. is my Instagram handle. And I would awesome. say that's like, reach out definitely yeah. anytime. And I'd be happy to hopefully impart some more wisdom if mm. it helps you or just want to vent or tell me how it's changed your life or you're doing 75 hard or I don't know, something. <laughs> yeah. Or if you do want to change your, yes. your career or you want to take yeah. another path or you do want to build your own business, well, you definitely need to call her. You definitely need to reach out and because um, she's done an incredible, incredible amount of um, success in very short amount of time. Six years is a very short amount of time and she's still going, going and going and going. She's never going to quit. So. No, never going to quit. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for everybody being here and listening and supporting my show and, and being here today. And um, just remember that if you, you just, if you want to create the life that you want, you can. All it is is just one day at a time. So I love you. God bless you. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. This was awesome.